Hi, welcome back to the breadboard and the second part of five on how to make a 3D mask of your own skull. In part one, we looked at exporting the models from the original CAT scans or uh, CT scans and saving them as STL files, one for the skull and one for the face. In this video, we're going to look at how to use Mesh Mixer from Autodesk to clean up the um, skull and the face and make it ready for uh, merging the two together in a um, difference mode so that we can hollow out the inside of the skull to make it fit your face. And we're also going to be scaling it uh, and, and doing a little bit of cleanup as well in preparation for that. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now that we've loaded our model up in Mesh Mixer, we're starting with the face here, we need to clean it up. But the first thing we want to do is have a look where any errors are. So if you run Analyze Inspector, it will actually pinpoint, literally, with little pins, where all the errors are. The blue ones are because there are holes in the model. Um, the red ones are errors, and I'm not quite sure what the purple ones are, but they, a lot of these will easily clean themselves up. What we have an issue with is that there are areas in this model that will be difficult, and if I try and clean them, they will either refuse to clean or make a complex um, model, which would be difficult to export properly and um, do our blending. So what I want to do is, you can see here, when I look, a lot of these errors are actually going right through to this inner ear section on both sides, and a little bit with these protrusions over here. So what we want to try and do is actually um, delete them. So if we zoom in here, we can actually get a uh, closer view. And we can then go to a uh, selection tool and highlight a lot of this area. To delete parts of this model. All right, now these are faces. Um, so it's going to be difficult in some cases to be able to delete them because we have to be able to try and get connected to them. But if we now just press delete, we're just selecting a few trying to um, clear them out, easily clean themselves up. What we have an issue with is that there are areas in this model that will be difficult and if I try and clean them, they will either refuse to clean or make a complex. When As you're working through this, once you actually have some pieces that are completely disconnected, you are able to ignore them because we can delete them in an easy way later on. What I'm trying to do is get rid of a bulk of this internal area so that it doesn't cause us any problems later on. So now what I can do is if I select everything of the main part of the model, let me just clear the selection uh, so they don't catch anything else. And if I double click the main model so that it all gets highlighted, and again, press I for invert, it should select everything that wasn't attached. And now if I hit delete, we should be able to clean up the inside just like that. So now if I move around and look inside the ear here, you can see now that we are fairly clean. Yes, there's a hole now that we need to fill in, but we're pretty good. So I'm just going to do a little bit around the nose area here, and then also the other ear, and then I'll come back to you. Just realized an easier way of doing this is actually to go from the outside and just carefully do some from the inner area here. Now the reason why we can do this is because this is you're not going to be wanting to have this filled in on the model anyway once you create the mask. So clearing this out just makes room for your actual ear to be um, not blocked with the mask when you're wearing it. So from this side, if we do the selection, we can actually go in and take out the lots of the inner ear to try and separate it. Just make sure you don't come outside of the ear. You can change your angle okay um, so that we can separate this easily and then when we hit delete hopefully 
is there's the air canal there so if we get in here bring it right around it should actually disconnect everything now from the outside of the ear so let's just press delete and I think now if we select the entire model again press I for invert and now press delete we should have hopefully cleared up a lot of what was inside there and there we go nice okay so that's an easier way I think just going from the outside rather than the inside I'm just going to clear up a few more things and then be ready to continue. Now you can see that we've done a fairly good job of cleaning out all of the inside of the head. We should be able to now uh, get it to do an inspection and not have a serious amount of errors. Obviously there are the holes that need to be filled, uh, which will be highlighted. And you can see now there's far less issues than what there was before and if we just click on the ones that are in error it should like it's just done there fill it in so that's filled that side in made it solid and tried to follow the contours uh, we'll do this side with the ear and that's filled that one in for us made it into a solid we have the hole in the top of the skull take a little longer because it's a bigger area and that's filled that in but it's filled it in a little bit on the flat side so we'll do this one in a different way so let's just undo that uh, we'll go select and we'll shrink the tool selection down a little bit go right in the edge of the hole double click to select this perimeter like that now if you do edit, erase and fill, it will do the same thing as before, but this time we will have an option to do a smooth fill, which actually follows the contours of the head. So now, when we look at this, you can see that that contour is a little bit on the, um, let's say, bumpy side. The, the bump out is too much. So this bulge here, you can actually reduce it. And what we actually want is about a minus four value from experience so I'll do that and we'll see how much it reduces that by there that's nice just a nice smooth contour on the top so that's good that's done we'll accept that let's just zoom out again a little bit now let's see what errors we have left if we do another analyze inspector we should have virtually nothing left except for this hole in the bottom this hole is not actually um, simply a hole the red line indicates that it's actually an error so we're going to try and use a different tool to fix it because the um, the normal one here won't the, do the, the job the, um, a different tool here see if it'll make a better job of it the make solid will normally try and fill in any holes that it finds and there is only the one big one at the bottom here now so hopefully it'll just flatten that across like that which it just did and left leave the rest alone okay looks like we're good now um, as you can see the make solid when it's done leaves the model a little bit low resolution because of its selections if we up the size of the accuracy to about 200 and also the density to about 200 when we end up saving the file it will be of a reasonable size we'll just click update to reapply that mesh that we just did and now it probably will look okay which it does that's not too bad considering it's going to be 3D printed. We've got solid on the bottom. Now we have a new model and now we'll just do an analyze to make sure it's clean. We shouldn't get any errors this time. Okay, no errors. So now we're in a position where we can export this model as a still file. Now I need to do the exact same process with the mask and notice that in all of this I did not move the model on the mesh anywhere on the grid. I left it where it is. Um, and this is important for when we get to a later stage. So now let's just go into the mesh mixer for the skull and we'll basically do the same kind of thing.
Okay, so I've loaded up the skull, and as you can see, there are a lot more loose artifacts and issues that need to be cleaned up here because there's a lot of internal bone structures that need to be gotten rid of, uh, and a lot of loose pieces too, like the earrings that were solid as well. So the, I think the first thing to do here is to select the main skull by going select and double clicking on an area of the main skull to highlight it all. Then we'll invert the selection and press delete. This will get rid of any um, currently known issues with the skull. Uh, so it's nice and clean. Just got the one object now. We need to fill in this hole on the top of the skull. So first thing we'll do is fix the hole in the roof. Okay, so run analyze inspector. We'll see that there's probably still a few errors, and you can see some of these go right inside. Some of these are just simply to do with holes, and we can fill these ones in either by double clicking to eliminate them. It'll just fill in those ones. Easy enough. You could just accept all two, but it wouldn't necessarily fix everything. So we'll just do the ones that we can see here. Now, if we tell this to fix everything else, right, the red ones, some of them will actually fix by the look of it. Let's just say auto repair everything and see if it actually now does fix the remainder without screwing it up. And it looks like it has. The idea is to make it into a solid model. So we say done there. And we'll try that again to make sure it's now clean. And it is, so let's go make it a solid. And we're good. Change the scale to 200. Sorry, not the scale, but the mesh density and so solid accuracy, both to about 200 each. And we'll say update. Okay, you can see here that there are some areas on the mask that need cleaning up, quite a few. My daughter will take you through that process on uh, another video, which is after we've actually merged the face into the skull. Because when we actually do that, it's going to clean up and take away a lot of this stuff anyway. So there's no point in wasting time now until we've done that step. But what we do want to do here is um, we've done the make solid, so let's just accept that. We will do another analyze to make sure it's no errors. There are a few, but we can fix those easily. All right, we're done there. Now we can export this one. Now before we export it though, what I want to do is make sure we don't, number one, we don't have any loose artifacts. Um, and number two, we need to scale it slightly so the head fits inside here. So we're gonna select again, double click the main body. That should select everything. Let's do an invert. And then we'll just press the delete to make sure that we've got rid of anything loose that might have been floating around. Um, edit. Now we're going to transform and we're going to scale the skull. We need to do it about 101.35, so about 35% increase in size. Um, I'm doing that because we're going to make the face a little bit bigger as well. I know I haven't done that step yet, but you'll see how to do it when I do this one. Um, we want to have uniform scaling. If this is unchecked, then make sure you turn it on, and that way the X, Y, and Z will all go together. Take the little square in the middle of here, and all you've got to do is drag it in or out, and it will scale appropriately. We want this so that our scale on X, Y, and Z is 1.35. 
or thereabout, maybe 1.33 might be better. 1.3 works, but it, it doesn't quite, it doesn't leave you enough room once you've um, increased the size of the face. If you leave the face in its original size, it doesn't leave enough to be cleaning out um, and making contact with everything and we want it to be able to be slightly loose on the head so that it's not a skin tight fit and makes you all uh, sweaty and everything over time. You want to be able to leave a little bit um, for air to move around inside if you can, just a little bit. So we're going to leave that at 1.352 and what we'll do is we'll put a 5% um, increase. No, I said I don't want to do that. I want to go down a little bit further. 1.33 maybe. 1.32 will do. And we'll do about a 2% increase on the face just to give a bit of a gap. So we'll accept that. And now we're just going to export this, um, the skull. So let's just quickly open the mask, the face model again, and just quickly increase its size by 2%. So we'll go edit, transform, um, automatically selected the only object that's there. We've got uniform scaling in. So go up to about 1.02 on the scale. because these are linked they should all go by just typing in 1.02 yeah they're all the same so now we'll say accept for that and we'll re-export this back over the same file so this is face solid we'll overwrite that we we'll saved it so now we have our two models um, the face is ready to punch out into the skull now there will be a little bit of editing needed after we've done this as well and as I said that will be a separate video. So now we have these two models prepared in Mesh Mixer. That's so we'll exit Mesh, Mesh Mixer and we're done for this video. The next video will be showing you how to use Blender to take these two models and actually use the face to carve out the inside of the skull. So I will see you there.